Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about my book and my path to publication and a little bit about my writing process. And then I wanted to read a chapter from my book. Um, so first of all, But for the Mountains um, is about a girl named Arden Thatcher who is chosen to attend an institute that educates the next generation of women in politics. Um, but of course, once she gets there, she realizes that's not really what's happening. Um, these women are not getting political appointments. They're just sort of getting married off to ambassadors from other countries. Um, and not just that, but the big prize this particular year appears to be the prime minister's son. Uh, that's not what Arden wants um, at all. But then when danger follows her there from home, she has to figure out if she's willing to play along to stay safe or if she is going to forge her own path and make her own way out. Um, so But for the Mountains is my debut novel. It released last June. Uh, we were talking about this before in the middle of the pandemic. So it was a really challenging time to be doing this, but I wouldn't change it for the world. I love this book. Um, I, my publication journey actually goes back to uh, 2017 when I first drafted the novel. But even before that, in 2016, I attended a local writing conference called the Willamette Writers Conference. And they also have a student um, side of this, uh, just FYI. Um, and when I was there, I happened to win a free full manuscript critique from an editor with a indie press. And I had been working on a different piece at that time. So I sent her that piece and it took a while for us to coordinate. And then I came back in 2017 and I connected with her as I was working, I was working on pitching, but for the mountains to some agents that at that point in time. So even though I had met with this editor about a totally different work, I told her about mountains. And by the end of the day, she had sent me an email asking if I would consider querying but for the mountains to their press. So I did because any opportunity is a great opportunity. And within a couple of months, um, I had a publication contract in hand and a couple of years, so about two years later is when the book came out. So I, it was kind of a little bit of an unorthodox path to publication, but that's how I got there. Um, and as for my writing process, um, it's not, I don't have a background in, like my degree isn't in writing. My degree is actually in political science and then I went to law school. So lots of writing, but not necessarily creative writing. But I've always been a storyteller. I've always been creative. And uh, my parents always told me I was a, a, they always called me a daydreamer, which I totally was. Um, and I started writing stories down and just um, kept doing it. And when I had my first son in uh, 2012, he started napping. So I started writing even more. And so I, I kind of credit him with me picking this up and taking it more seriously. Um, in terms of my process, I just write. I write and I write and I write. And a couple of years ago, I heard April Henry at a um, talk. who's a wonderful young adult thriller author. And she said, you can't edit nothing, but you can edit crap. So write the crap. And I think I remind myself that every time I sit down and I think, I don't know if I've got it today. Um, the other thing that I do that really helps my process is I actually set timers constantly. I, my phone is always set to a 20 minute timer because I know that I can put things down and I can step away from text messages and emails and whatever else I need for 20 minutes. And I just write and I write the crap and I know that I can edit it later. Um, so that's, that's kind of how I approach writing. And in terms of editing, um, one of the other things that I do in my spare time, or at least pre-pandemic spare time, is I work with a teen theater company in Hillsboro. I'm, like, I'm a music director and I've done some other directing. And when I go through editing, I really like to approach my scenes the same way I would approach a scene if I was directing it. I look at the set dressing and I look at the blocking and I try and if something's not quite working between my two characters, I try and think about how I would direct my actors so that you can get the emotional resonance of that scene. Um, and so if you were to, another way to think about it is taking the scene that's in your head and imagining it on a screen. And what would that look like if it was on, if it was a television show or a movie? 
So those are the two biggest things that kind of go through my head when I'm writing and editing. Um, so that being said, I'll go ahead and read from but for the mountains and here's the cover which i love 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 <laughs> all right so this is a little ways into the book arden has arrived at the institute and um they have just taken their first round of exams to see where everybody is and um that's i think that's what you need to know the dining hall is mostly cleared out by the time i return i scanned a few girls left and recognized the brunette from earlier of all of them, she's the one who most seemed like me. Plus, she's alone. She stares as I approach, mouth wide and frozen, about to bite into the shiny red apple held suspended in her hand. Her hazel eyes are round and large, as though she's surprised I could even see her. I sit and help myself to the finger sandwiches on the platter before us. She waits until I've bitten into a dainty cucumber one, and then finally chomps into the flesh of her fruit. I'm Arden, I say, after a few minutes. She finishes chewing and looks down at my torso. What happened to your dress, she asks. Her voice is lower than I would have expected from her slight posture, with a lilting hiccup of an accent. It's less a question and more a statement. I was clumsy. She stares and chews, like a horse sizing up a potential rider. Her mouth works in big circles, and the yellowish flesh of the apple is stained with lipstick, lipstick that is now missing from her mouth. She lifts her thin eyebrows and shrugs. I'm Zara. I nod, reaching for another small sandwich. Where are you from? I ask, taking a bite. This one is creamy. It's tangy and tastes of fish. I thought I'd had enough fish on the peninsula to last me my entire life. But this flavor is new and different. I take a second bite to better savor it. The North, she says. Really? I ask, perking up. Yeah, she says, skeptical at my interest. I'm from the peninsula, I say. I know. Her words aren't harsh, though, and her features are almost expressionless, save for her large, wide eyes. Her skin is pale, made more so by the dark fabric of her dress. The garment's high neck makes her features cut in severe angles, but up close, everything about her is soft, from the slope of her chin to the tip of her nose, the curl of her eyelashes. There's something innately breakable about this girl, something that's been hardened and calcified something I relate to. That must have been a long trip, she says, biting into her apple. Juice drips down her palm into her fussy white cuff. It was, I say. It was also dark, so I didn't see much. We arrived as the sun came up. How romantic, she says, biting again, slow and hard. I huff a small laugh through my nose and then wince, hoping I haven't offended her. She grins. Just wanted to see if you could take a joke. You're the first one who can, by the way, she says. Glad I passed at least one test today, I say, and grimace. That bad, she asks, eyebrow arching toward her hairline. The girls here are likely a combination of friend and foe, and I need to figure out which is which. But something about Zara calls to me, reminds me of Nev, suggests that I can let her in. I decide to hope she's a friend. I know it was, I say, drooping with the admission of my failure. I know Dean St. James said it was impossible to fail or that they wouldn't send us home for failing, but it still feels very possible. You don't speak like you're stupid, Zara says with a gentle chuckle. I smile and bite into another thin sandwich, cucumber this time. I'll take that as a compliment, I say. Take it any way you like, she says. Nobody's gonna care if you can take a test. They're gonna care what you sound like, what you look like. They might even care what you say. But if you're pretty enough, not even that will really matter. Well, that's quite a glass half full worldview, I say. Just being honest, she says with a shrug. We all know what they're looking for here. Whatever they want us to think, this is a finishing school. A finishing school designed to win the affections of a certain royal man child. She crinkles her nose in distaste and I laugh. What about the alumni who've been placed around the world? I ask, setting down my half eaten sandwich. I unfold the cloth napkin, cream colored like everything else waiting on the table and use it to wipe my mouth. Yeah, and what about those posts? What are they? Can you even tell me? She asks. She leans back in her chair, smug and waiting as she bites into the bottom of the apple core. I tried to remember what some of the more prestigious posts have been. Wasn't there a girl last year who went to Espancia? I asked. Yeah, there was a girl last year who married a guy from Espancia, she says, 
popping the rest of the apple into her mouth and crunching away. Well, I'm not here to marry Declan, I say. Except maybe I am. Maybe that's what Conrad was talking about. Zara snorts, eyeing me with a mix of intrigue and dismissal. Don't tell anyone else. They'd probably send you home. Or to a reform school to correct whatever imbalance led you to that misguided decision. Or they'll send me home for being an idiot, I say. Hey, I told you, if you're pretty, smart doesn't matter. She stands, nodding at a passing server as she snatches another apple from their tray. She tucks it into her side, polishing its shiny red skin as she strides out through the doors and away, never glancing back. I slump on my chair. Maybe Nev was onto something after all. I've never worried about whether or not I was pretty, but after the humiliate, humiliating failure of that test, maybe it's time I tried. Thank you. <laughs> Thank 